Yeah.
Thank you for protection all around us. Oh, yes. And dear God, we thank you for our early ride this morning. Didn't find that the judgment ball. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Given the kind of things that we've done in this world. Oh, yes. God our Father, we are so thankful that as we begin to move out, we realize that once we give you have blessed us yes. with the original portion of health and strength. Yes. 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 When we open up our eyes, we are able to see. Yes. When we open up our mouth, we are able to speak. Yes. Yes. When we turn out, we are able to be able to hear. Yes. And these are just some of the things that our Father we take for granted. Yes, 
bless the Lord at all times. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise. His praise. Shall continually. Shall continually. Be in my mouth. Be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The honor shall hear thereof. The honor shall hear thereof. And be glad. And be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt. And let us exalt. His name together. His name together. God of grace and glory, we thank you now for this pristine privilege to stand behind this sacred desk, to stand before you, and to stand before your people, and to stand with your people, and worship you in spirit and in truth. We count it all joy to get up this morning, to come out, to assemble ourselves, one with another. Now we ask that you have me decrease, you would increase, and that you have me safely and deeply in the shadows of the cross of heaven and make the love of Jesus be known in a very, very dynamic way. Yes, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, this morning, let me first of all say, uh, not first of all, because I've already said it, so it won't be first, but let me say again, it's so good to see all of you. Amen. 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 Good to be standing here, um, uh, COVID free. Yes. <laughs> now I can see my grandchildren again. Okay. And now I can sleep in the same bed with my wife. <laughs> I've been in quarantine for things. One thing I know if you really want to get better get things right than follow the rules. Yes, right. Follow the procedures. Amen. And every now and then I would step out in the sunshine and soak up some sun and that was fun. Yes. And so I have a sense of those who struggle with cabin fever yes. or who have been struggling all along with this COVID thing. Yes. And one thing I've come to realize and uh, now even before having is that um, it's going to be here yes. seemingly for a moment we're going to have to learn yes. to deal with it. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. How to navigate. And we're going to have to learn how to make choices in the light of this COVID thing, if I can say that. Uh, some folks uh, are very, very serious about COVID. So serious that they won't go anywhere, seemingly. Um, and they don't do anything, seemingly. Uh, but if you will uh, check up on them, you'll find that uh, they still know where Publix is. <laughs> and all of those kind of places. Concerts are at, on, on the what's that place? On Taylor Street. Yeah. <laughs> and they know where they're gathering on Saturday morning on Main Street with all the vendors and celebrating uh, this and celebrating right. that. And that's all I'm saying. Uh, you got to learn how to deal with it. Maybe those folks, maybe those folks can help teach us some way of learning how to make healthy choices to live with this COVID. Uh, yeah. uh, Amen. Yeah, they're there, and I see them going yeah. and coming, coming yeah. and going, yeah. coming and coming and coming. Yeah. To be told, I've been doing some of the same thing, but for the better part, I've been most disciplined about wearing my mask, especially yeah. among strangers and public places that are highly traveled yeah. and uh -huh. accommodated. And um, there are some things that I could do that I chose not to do. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. In, in the mindset of being safe. Yes. What I'm saying to you now is all relative to where I'm going with this morning message. And so if you would um, get with me early, as they say, with a few amen, the sooner you get with me, the sooner I'll cut you loose. Amen. <laughs> We're looking this morning at the gospel that's penned by Luke, uh, chapter 6, verses 12 through 13. I will be reading and you're hearing from the New Revised Standard Version. The gospel is penned by Luke, chapter 13, I'm sorry, chapter 12, verses 12 through 13. Luke 6, 12, and 13. Now during those days he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles. The end of the reading. Amen. I want to talk this morning as God shall guide from the subject, God and our choices. Amen. God 
and our choices. Amen. I don't know if you know it or realize it, but choices are like legs. They give us movement and help us to get on with life on our own terms. Choices are also like doors. Uh, through them we enter into new areas, although we are then shut off from where we previously came. Choosing has to do with making a selection between alternatives, deciding about a matter, giving preference to one alternative over another on the basis of some plan or criterion or end that is envisioned. Choices are necessary and inevitable. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Choices yeah. are necessary and inevitable. Uh -huh. At some point, whether you're in a quandary or whether you are baffled or befuddled about this or that, at some point, you or I, standing at the crossroads, will have to choose yes, this or that. That's right. Whether to go or whether to stay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Whether to give or whether not to give. Whether to be or whether to do, life is filled with choice. And they are awesomely personal and decisive. I know some folks say, I would have chose that dress. I would have chose that hat. I would have chose that meal. That ain't you. You choose what you want to choose. And I choose what. I want to kind of remind me to the place that uh, if I can uh, make it uh, theological or uh, spiritual, uh, what God has for me yes. is yes. for me. Yes. Yes. And what God has for you yes. is yes. for you. Yes. Yes. Because I learned a long time ago some people don't like turnips. Yes. And some yes. folks hurt, hate Oprah and Squatch. Yes. Our choices. I say again, awesomely personal and decisive. Uh -huh. uh, we often need help in making them. Yeah. Uh, what are we having for dinner? Uh, what movie do you want to watch tonight? Uh, which tie shall I wear? Uh, uh, which dress shall I wear? Now, now, I'm old enough to dress myself. I don't really need any help, but it's nice every now and then to have someone to help you decide, especially if they're going to be with you for a while and looking at you. you know, it's nice sometimes to get a little advice, a little feedback, they call it. Our text reports a decision time in the life of Jesus, that time when he had to choose and appoint leaders, leaders to extend his ministry to the masses. It's an account of how Jesus handled crucial decision making. And this account, my brothers and sisters, also brings insight into how God can relate to us when we need to make choices. Oh, yes. Jesus was concerned about the future of his work. He saw and felt the need to train a small group to expand his strategic ministry of preaching and teaching and healing. Oh, yes. There were needs among the people, many, many unmet needs, and other hands would be required for the work necessary to help the people in need. Oh, yes. Jesus knew that. He knew that he had made an impact upon a growing group of followers and the sight of a thronging mass of listeners as he preached and talked in here and there and everywhere. Therefore, he must have been encouraged by what he saw. But Jesus also knew that not everyone in the throne was listening to him for the right reason. Can I get a witness? Amen. And that not everyone would give his words full freedom in their lives. I can believe that Jesus looked with an ever-deepening interest at certain faces in the crowd, sensitive to those who seemed most alert most open and most eager and responsive to his presence and message. Mm -hmm. The time finally came, the text states, when Jesus decided to single out certain persons from within the listening crowd. Mm -hmm. It was a special time for choosing, 
A crucial decision was in the making. A vision of human possibilities had taken shape in his heart and mind, and the pressure of choosing wisely weighed upon his shoulder. Oh, yes. The text tells us what Jesus did as he reached that point of concern. And I'll give you my three points and get out of your way. One, under pressure to decide, Jesus withdrew to pray about the action he needed to take. He went out to the mountain to pray. For decision making is best handled when steeped in the flavor of prayer. Prayer to God about what we feel or know is necessary to focus the human spirit and heightens the consciousness. It lights up the mind and exposes any dark corners of thought. Prayer lets divine dialogue with God happen. Yes. 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 Yes, sir. I was talking a little bit earlier about COVID. A lot of folks talk about COVID, but a lot of folks not really praying to God about COVID. Yes. Folks praying about COVID, but they're not praying to God about COVID. Yes. I continue to be praying to God about anything yes. and everything. Yes. God Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Help me, sir. Yes, sir. Can't you hear? Can't you hear that song? 
true. Yes. All night long. Yes. And we don't have to go very far. We can see him on that night in Gethsemane with the disciples and ask them to come pray with him. Pray for him as he went a little further to pray. And he come back and he found him asleep. And he said, could you not pray one hour?
blessed thing with it. Your past is gone, you can do a blessed thing with it beyond learn from it. You can't even relive it. You can't live in it. Let it go. Because not the scripture said any man, woman, be in Christ, he's a new creature. Those old things that were displeasing to Christ are done away with, and behold, all of them.
Simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like, and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. Give. Done.